Hello everyone, this is Bodhi, and welcome back to another episode on the Cornerstone SMP server. Right now, we are in front of our brand new shop that we built in the last episode, which if you haven't seen, I would highly recommend and appreciate it if you went and watched that. That was one of the most fun episodes I've made in a while, and I really enjoyed building up our brand new shop, Bodhi Buys. Now, first things first, I want to check if we've made any profits, because uh, last we left off, I hadn't really stocked this thing up at all, but I came in here on a stream and pretty much stocked up every item, uh, save a couple, uh, that we have in the shop. For example, we didn't have any stock of Wither Roses or Gravel, so we weren't able to put those in. But we have pretty much stocked up every other item in the shop, which is great. So let's check if anyone has bought anything. Okay, we made four diamonds in this barrel. And um, I don't think we've made any in the other barrels. Uh, yeah, nothing in the other barrels. I mean, this one's probably going to get the most use because uh, this is where all the items are. Now, hopefully, we'll end up stocking all of these aisles eventually. But for now, we haven't even filled this one completely. But I am curious to find out what we actually sold. And it looks like the shroom lights were what was purchased, which we are selling for two diamonds per stack. So the four diamonds means that that is... Uh, all we sold, which is okay. This has only been stocked for a day or two now. So I'm hoping that more business will come with time. Um, so yeah, I'll check back on it later. But for today, four diamonds is completely fine. Now we do have one other shop over here that is still stocked. And that is the bone and coal shop. Okay, so no sales over here. That's completely fine. And uh, also I wanted to mention that I took down my temporary end shop over there because now we're just going to be selling shulker uh, shells in Bodhi buys. So we don't need that temporary shop anymore. And uh, this space can be used for someone else if they want it. At our village now, and it looks like we have a little bit of a gift from Jack of All Trades. Okay, we got some cookies and some rose bushes. Not something I was expecting to get. And he gave us a diamond, which is uh, not too shabby considering he's still relatively new on the server. And that is super nice of him, so I will make sure to thank him for that. And we also got a donation from Elementalist, and he just recently finished his Guardian farm, and I asked him if he could maybe supply some Sea Lanterns for when we want to work on the Nether Hub more, because we need a ton of those. So these are not going to be for personal use. If I use them personally, I will buy them. But these are uh, donations to build the Nether Hub with, since it's sort of a community project. So... Big thanks to Jack of All Trades and Elementalist. I uh, am eager to use these and super happy with the items. And I mean, who doesn't love some cookies, right? By the way, guys, if you are enjoying the video, please do hit that like button and consider subscribing to the channel as we are once again very close to 100 subscribers. And I am very eager to hit that milestone, so I would definitely appreciate it. But with all that out of the way, let's get on with today's episode. Heading back to our snowy Star Wars base area now, and I do have some more plans outside of that place for today, but first and foremost, I think I want to start off by making a lot more progress on the mountain uh, project that we've been working on over there, because uh, once we can uh, start to call that part finished, or at least uh, take a break from that, we can start to work on uh, other elements of the base over there. So uh, let's see where we're at on that project. You might want to brace yourselves for what you're about to see because two episodes ago, Hicks left at our area a villager head a tree. And it looks like there's some more posts, which means if we get a bit closer, we're probably going to start to see... Okay, okay, yep, there's a, there's a lot more. And these are not villager heads, oh my goodness. Okay, wow. Wait a second, he left us a bunch of Star Wars head trees. Now, these things are absolutely weird, <laughs> but hey, since we're building a Star Wars base, we can actually maybe put these uh, skulls to good use on armor stands. Let's see, we got Boba Fett, we got some Jawas, uh, we got Darth Maul. What is this? This is either uh, an Imperial Guard or a Sith Trooper, I believe. I don't know. And that's a uh, Stormtrooper, obviously. And here's the original Villager head uh, tree, which is still looking as awful as usual. But uh, this is kind of a prank, but it's kind of a donation. We can definitely use these for sure. 
here's where we're at with the mountain project now nothing has changed since the last time i uh did a time lapse of this which was a few episodes ago uh but i'd say we're about halfway done maybe a little bit less than halfway done and i don't know if i'm gonna finish it today but i want to get at least like the next few sections done now obviously i had mentioned that i'm not gonna be focusing on the back part and uh that stance i'm not going to be doing that anytime soon i don't think oh boy i need to light this place up okay yeah i'll take care of that in a second but for now i think that i'm going to kick this off into a time lapse and for me i'm probably going to do a couple of streams here and there uh trying to uh finish this up or make progress on it but yeah anyways for you guys it'll just be a time lapse of the footage that we get done so uh sit back relax and enjoy the mountain building progress Well, I hope you all enjoyed that time lapse, and as you can see, the mountain has come along absolutely amazing. I love how it is looking. When you take a step back at this angle here, it just looks absolutely massive and amazing, and I love it. Now, I don't think we can necessarily call it finished, because let's be honest, it doesn't even have a backside to it. But we are definitely at a natural stopping point, and I have gotten done what I wanted to get done for it in today's episode. Now, ideally, there would be a few things I could update, like um, switching these dirt blocks out for snow to uh, make it blend together better, or switching this flat area out for a more natural looking uh, area, and then finally, adding more of these little stone patches that we have right here in order to increase the variation of the materials. But, uh, that is in an ideal world, and honestly, my motivation for this project is, uh, about at its limit, at least for today's episode. Now, we might come back to it eventually, but I think for the time being and for, uh, the foreseeable future, I'm going to leave it as it is, uh, for the most part. Because I really like how it's looking, and I don't think we need to do any more work on it, uh, today at least. But there is another project that I kind of want to work on in today's episode that is going to be pretty simple, pretty fun, but also pretty useful to us and to the server. So, I realized that I don't think that anyone on the server has a blaze farm, and seeing as those farms are not really too difficult to build up, I figured that we could go and try to find a good location and build one. Now, seeing as we just uh, built a shop that can sell literally anything, we can use this to get a personal supply for ourselves and also sell them to the other members. Now, it's not necessarily a resource that you need all the time, um, but it, it does have its uses for potion brewing or as a fuel source and whatnot. And uh, having a good supply of it will definitely be useful. And yeah, I just, I don't think that anyone else has one. I could be wrong about that, but I don't think so. But anyways, for now, let's head off and try to find, ideally, a double blaze spawner so that they're both activated in the same vicinity. If we can find one of those, we can make a double efficient farm, which would be absolutely amazing. So I'm going to be on the hunt for the perfect nether fortress to use, and I'll be back with you guys when I find one. Alright, so it took me a while, but I finally found what I was looking for. The specific configuration of spawners so that they are both in range of each other. Now, this nether fortress is pretty far away. It's not quite as far as my 
Wither Skeleton Farm, which is several thousand blocks away. But uh, this uh, takes me like a minute or two to get to in the nether uh, by flying, which is okay. Um, I'm happy that we found a double blaze spawner. And what that means is that they are both able... There's another one over here. They are both able to uh, be used in the same radius. Now, they are pretty far apart. They're pretty much at the max distance that they can be. And we have to stand on this specific block right here. And as we can see, if we zoom in, there are flames coming out of that one. And there are flames coming out of that one. Which means they will both be spawning blazes. But I have the shroom light uh, configuration so that they don't spawn right now. So yeah, I brought some materials over here so that we can get started on building. Now, since these are really far apart, we might have to tweak our design a little bit because getting them uh, to travel all the way from their spawners to a point here where we can kill them might be a little bit of a hassle, but I have a cool design in mind that we can use and I think that it'll come together nicely. Um, I'm not using a tutorial or anything for this one, but credit where credit is due, it is going to be heavily based on logical geek boys blaze farm that he recently built on the legacy smp server so i will leave a uh link in the description for that video if you want to check it out but it's not a tutorial i'm just uh copying some of the concepts that he used in his farm to build mine so without further ado let's start to hollow this place out a little bit more and get started on building the farms all right, scratch what I said about it being a simple project because we have now spent several hours and four full netherite pickaxes on just digging out and preparing this area. Now, granted, this level of uh, digging that we did might be a bit overkill, but I do really want to have like a big open area to have these two blaze spawning chambers in and connect them up to the center. So I think that this will be worth it in the end. But yeah, it definitely took a ridiculous amount of time to take out this whole area here. But now we can actually get started on the building. So we are nearly done now with our blaze farm build and I am super happy with how it's coming together So let me show you guys what we've got so far First of all the spawning chambers which are currently disabled But as soon as we take those shroom lights out it will turn on now I really like the design that we have here with the uh, spawning chambers But can I just say red sandstone is way too hard to get in minecraft because there is not a layer of the red sandstone Like there would be of normal sandstone in a desert um, so you have to craft it all out of red sand, which took me around two shulker boxes of that stuff just to get this much. So I might look into getting one of the vanilla tweaks data packs that lets you make it more uh, easily. But anyways, moving on from that, this system may look a bit complicated and uh, it was a little bit confusing at first, but it's not too bad at all. So basically in order to transport the blazes from the killing or from the spawning chambers up to the killing chamber we are going to be using mine carts oh let me get rid of this guy uh yeah we're going to be using mine carts so it's sort of like a roller coaster for the blazes but it's a roller coaster of death because a mine cart will go into the corner of the spawning chamber pick up one blaze at a time and then bring it through this track here and what that does is it suffocates it while it's inside those blocks and so that by the time it gets up to this chamber here it's only one hit 
which is really good because if the blazes were to not die from one hit, they would alert all the blazes inside the spawning chambers and those would all fly upwards and the farm would stop working until they landed again. So it's going to be really nice to be able to kill them in one hit. So um, next up, we got the system that uh, dispenses and collects the minecarts. So when this thing is on, the minecarts will just continuously go over here, fall back down, and go through the system. And this is the on-off switch right here. Oh my god, there's a ghast. Oh my god, there's a ghast. I have not seen one spawn there yet. That scared me so much. Yeah, this place, uh, we probably need to get like a wall around it or something. I really don't know. Um, anyway, yeah, the on-off switch flips this slime block uh, thing up and down, which powers these redstone uh, signals which invert these uh, rails so that when it's turned on, the minecarts will be dispensed from this dispenser and then they'll just constantly loop back around. And then when it's off, it'll flip back the other direction and then they'll all just go into the cactus and get collected and put back in the dispenser again, which is really nice. Um, but what we have to work on to finish the farm is a contraption that will send out the minecarts with a hopper timer because we don't want to send out all of our minecarts just repeatedly or it will will not be a steady flow of blazes so i'm going to set up some hopper timers to dispense three minecarts total on each side i believe um and we're going to dispense them out like five seconds apart so i think that'll increase the uh the efficiency of the farm having a more steady flow of blazes falling in here so yeah we have to do a little bit more redstoning down there but after that we should be able to put this farm to use so let's get to work on that all right so i have made several finishing touches and we are almost ready to put this farm to use so let me show you what we've got going on here so first of all you probably noticed that we have encased this area in glass so now we have a safe area to stand in and AFK this farm if we want to. Um, it's completely covered in glass so that no gas can shoot at us and no mobs outside of here can see us. Now, also, I added in a very compact storage system. Now, the reason that we only have one chest is because this is actually a shulker box loader. It's a one-wide tileable shulker box loader by uh, Samos the Sage, I believe, is his name on YouTube. So I will have a link to, to the tutorial for this design in the description below of course we still have to fill this up with shulker boxes but yeah basically this is going to be a much easier way of storing the blaze rods um than doing like a big array of chests so now if we take a trip outside of here we can uh, check out the redstone that i was talking about before now this system isn't too complex it's a string of some hopper timers so that basically I don't, i'm not going to explain the whole thing but it basically just sends three pulses uh, and uh, five seconds apart from each other so that that's how the minecarts get dispensed and it's the same thing on this side and this side uh, very uh, or it's completely the same and then you might also notice that we added some extra slabs here and that's just so that the magma cubes don't uh, end up on the track and stop the minecarts or anything like that now technically uh, magma cubes that are the smallest size can fit in this gap but there's no way for them to jump into this area anyway so it's uh the problem has been solved i believe i don't think any magma cubes can end up on the track now and so if we make our way back up here that is uh pretty much everything done and i think the last step before we can use the farm is to just go ahead and remove the shroom lights uh oh this guy's gonna attack me let's get inside okay we survived all right so yeah, let's go ahead and remove the shroom lights and then we can start to see this farm in action. I was able to easily remove the shroom lights with the help of some fire resist potions so that we could resist the blazes and the lava inside of there. And as you can see, the uh, blazes have started to gather. Now, technically, the spawners are not active from where I'm standing right now, or at least it doesn't look like it. Maybe that one was. Um, anyway, they can't both be active unless we're standing in a specific area, and that is this spot right here. So, I think that I just want to turn this thing on and start to test it. So, uh, if I flip this lever, then we should see the minecarts get dispensed. And there's the first one, and then five seconds later, another one should go. There we go. There's another one, and five seconds later one more and there's our third minecart now these guys are getting transported up and i think yep it's working perfectly except that that did oh you know what 
I added this layer of glass on top here. So those guys, okay, this is a problem. We got to turn it off and let me fix that real quick. Okay, so I fixed the problem by just adding some extra slabs here so that their only spot to come out of the minecart is on this block here. And I tested it on myself and so they should come out only on this block on both sides now. And I also uh, stocked up the uh, shulker box loader with a bunch of shulker boxes. So I think that it's time that I put this thing to use for at least a couple of minutes and see how well it is working. So I'll catch you guys after a good solid test. Okay, I'm sorry about the horrible blaze noises coming from above, but we have been uh, using this farm for just about like five to ten minutes now. And this is what we've gotten so far. Now, I did realize after the fact that we're going to actually have to add a sorting system in here because the blaze heads drop with uh, the data pack that we have. So we're just going to want to sort out the blaze rods and uh, probably move this down one and put a little sorting system in here. But that's not a big deal. The blaze rods don't, or the blaze heads don't drop too frequently. So we can just have like a separate chest off to the side and just use the shulker loader for the blaze rods. But anyway, this is a very good amount for how little time we've been using it. And I am very, very happy with this farm. And I think that we can call this project done for today. And with this fantastic project finished, we are going to have to end out today's episode. I had a ton of fun working on this farm and also the other parts in today's episode. And by the way, I was wondering if any of you guys would want to see a tutorial on this farm. Like I said, it's not my original idea. It is largely based on concepts from Logical Geek Boy. But I did build this design completely on my own, just taking inspiration from a video of his, which was not a tutorial, he just built it on the Legacy SMP. If that is something you guys would be interested in, be sure to let me know in the comments down below because I've been thinking about starting to do some tutorials on my channel as it seems like a great way to attract new viewers and also uh, give some advice to uh, other Minecrafters out there. But anyways guys, if you did enjoy the video as much as I enjoyed making it, please do leave a like on it. And be sure to subscribe if you're new to the channel and are enjoying the content. Once again, I am very close to 100 subscribers and your one subscribe would go a long way if you appreciated the content. Uh, but without further ado, guys, this has been Bodhi and I will see you all in the next episode. <laughs>